Hi, and welcome to this live reading from A Forever Kind of Thing by Carrie Thomas and Melinda Harris. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue, Mina, fifth grade. <sighs> another day, another bully. Up until a few months ago, that was the story of my life. Constantly teased about where I lived and the clothes I wore. Like those things made me a bad person. I had no reason to believe fifth grade would be any different, but I was halfway through the school year and loving life, all thanks to an unlikely friendship with a boy from New Hope. Wesley Montgomery, official secret keeper, slayer of bullies, and my very best friend. Even though he was new, Wes strolled into the classroom on the first day of fifth grade like he owned the place. Shoulders back, head held high, and smiling like he knew all the best secrets. Everyone was staring, including me. But it wasn't just because Wes was the new kid. Golden hair and sun-kissed skin. Eyes so blue it was like looking up at the sky on a cloudless day. And the coolest Alice in Chains t-shirt I'd ever seen. I'd never thought of a boy as beautiful before, but it was the first word that pop popped into my mind the minute I saw him. And that's why I was shocked when all, out of all the empty seats in the room, he took the one next to mine. Even if you swapped my secondhand clothes for designer or originals, I still wouldn't be anything special. Too tall and too skinny. My long blonde hair was always a tangled mess and my eyes were just an ordinary shade of brown, nothing like Wes's starlight blue. As soon as he sat down that day, I tried to warn him off. Hey, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. He chuckled as if he thought I was joking. I I I'm serious. I trudged on, feeling it was the best gift I could offer him on his first day at a new school. You don't want to sit next to me. Moss's face scrunched up like he was confused. Why not? Because you're the new kid, I explained. And if you're trying to make a good first impression, sitting next to me isn't going to help. Who says? Uh, everyone? I wondered for a moment if maybe his good looks meant he got shortchanged in the IQ department. It's mostly because I get my clothes from thrift stores and live in a trailer park. I like your clothes, he shrugged. And I live in a boy's home. My eyes widened in surprise. Yeah? He nodded once. What else you got? Determined to convince him of the truth, I thought about telling him how the kids at school liked to spread rumors about my mama being a whore or an addict or whatever horrible lies they could come up with to try and keep me down. But I knew Wes would hear the rumors even eventually, and it made me sick to my stomach just thinking about it. I didn't care about most of the lies they told about me, but my mama was the best. We had dance parties every night after dinner while jamming out to her favorite 90s bands. She brought me wildflowers anytime I was sad, maybe chicken noodle soup when I was sick, and even helped me build the fairy houses in the woods. She was more than a mom. She was my hero. But the bullies wouldn't listen, and after a while, I stopped wasting my time trying to convince them otherwise. It's just me and my mama at home, I said, leaving out the rest. I've never even met my dad. I haven't seen my mom in years, Wes told me. And my dad isn't worth meeting. Crossing my arms, I stared at him, trying to figure out his game. It was a pleasant surprise to find out we had a few crummy life things in common. But I had a hard time trusting people. Plus, he was still miles ahead of me in the looks department, which I knew made a difference. I decided it was time to bring out the big guns. Close. Pearl Jam is one of my favorite bands, and I think unicorns are boss. Shocked and fresh out of comebacks, I threw up my hands in defeat. Although the way he kept smiling at me made it feel more like winning than losing, all shiny white teeth and dimpled cheeks, I decided I really liked his smile. Fine, have it your way then, I told him. But don't say I didn't warn you when they start calling you names too. He frowned at that as if he actually cared. They call you names? My eyes burned as I stared down at my pet lap. They call me lots of names. Pigpen is their favorite. Wes tapped me on the shoulder, and I looked up to find him smiling at me again. Personally, when it comes to Peanuts characters, I'd peg you as more of a Woodstock than a pig pen. A lock of his shaggy blonde hair fell over one eye as he stared at me, and I returned his smile for the first time. 
Turned out, Wes was even better than he looked. He was Kurt Cobain perfect. Worried I was about to make a huge mistake in trusting him. I wiped a sweaty palm on my favorite pair of leggings, black with yellow smiley faces all over them, and then extended my hand. I'm Mina Morrison. Nice to meet you. He gave my hand a firm shake. Wesley Montgomery. Nice to meet you, Mina. I'd say the rest was history, but I wasn't so sure at first. I, I knew it would only be a matter of hours, days, if I was lucky, before Wes jumped on the Mina Morrison as Trailer Park Trash bandwagon. For weeks, I held my breath every morning as I walked into class and took my seat next to him. Buddy always greeted me with the same happy smile. Then we would talk about our favorite music and books, what we wanted to be when we grew up, a teacher, me, an artist, Wes. And he always made me laugh with his crazy tales from New Hope, the boys' home where he was staying. But it wasn't until the day Wes took on the whole lunch table in my defense that it finally clicked. Not only did I have a friend, I had a best friend. It was one of the happiest days of my life. On our first day back from winter break and I rushed to class eager to see my bestie. As I slid into my seat next to Wes, my hands shook with excitement as I placed my backpack on the back of the chair. Did he miss me like I missed him? Wes turned to me and grinned. Hey there, I'm Wesley Montgomery. Giggling, I accepted his awkward hand. Hi, Wesley, I'm Mina. What's so funny, Mina? I know who you are, dummy, I told him, and he laughed. Light and happy sounding, he had the best laugh. Well, I was worried you may have forgotten about me. Forget about him? Never, but I already knew he loved teasing me, so I played along. You know, I tapped my chin. It's been a whole two weeks since I saw you last. You better not go that long again, just to be safe. Wes smiled. Sounds like a plan. Satisfied he seemed happy to see me too, I grabbed my notebook from my backpack and decided to doodle while we waited for class to start. I wanted to ask him about his holidays, to see if he got any cool presents other than the sketchbook and pencils I gave him, of course, but I was worried the answer to my questions would make us both sad, and I didn't want to ruin our happy reunion. I was halfway through drawing a sunflower when Wes nudged my side with his elbow. Since I didn't get you a Christmas present, how about I draw you a picture? Looking around the classroom for inspiration, I tried to think of something good. How about my favorite mythical creature? He nodded. A unicorn it is. Then I watched as he pulled out a piece of notebook paper and got to work. I wasn't going to tell him again how he didn't have to give me anything, that those art supplies I gave to him were the least I could do to thank him for being the best friend ever. But selfishly, I loved it when Wes drew me pictures. He was much better at drawing than I was. I'd say he was better than anyone in class, maybe better than anyone in the whole school. I, I could do bubble letters and some cute monkey faces my mama taught me, but Wes was an artist. Here you go, unicorn girl. In less than five minutes, he handed me his drawing, and I knew if I had a million Christmas presents to choose from, I'd pick this one every time. Oh, I love it, I told him, even though the words didn't feel like enough. Thank you, Wes. The next day, he came into class and sat next to me with a bigger-than-usual smile on his face. And what are you so happy about? I asked, wondering what he was up to. Looking in both directions, he made sure no one could overhear before he whispered. I have a secret. Smiling, I leaned in closer, eager to hear the gossip. What kind of secret? Somebody has a crush on you, he told me, and my head snapped back in surprise. A crush? I pointed to my chest. On me? Wes nodded. And he rides my bus. Well, who is it? I can't tell you, he winked. It's a secret. My eyes widened, shocked that my supposed best friend would tell me such a thing without fully dishing the goods. Then why mention it at all? Wes shrugged. Just thought you might want to know. But why won't you tell me? I whined, even pouted a little. Okay, fine, he caved. How about I tell you this afternoon? I stopped to consider his offer. It would stink to have to wait the entire day to find out who the mystery boy was. But there was no use pushing him. Wes was even more stubborn than me. Promise you'll tell me today? He looked at me funny for a moment, like he was trying to decide something. When I got get on the bus this afternoon, he finally said, I'll point to him so you'll know who he is. Can't I at least have a hint? I begged, unashamed. Nope, he popped the pee. But I promise you'll know today. 
The bell rang before I could say anything more, and by the time lunch rolled around, I'd given up on trying to convince Wes to reveal his big secret early. I'd even offered my favorite Pearl Jam t-shirt in a desperate plea, but the guy wouldn't budge. <laughs> Not even for Pearl Jam. As soon as the afternoon announcements echoed through the speakers, I shoved everything into my backpack and made sure I was the first person in line for bus riders. Bouncing on my toes, I waited for the teacher to give the go-ahead, then walked to my bus as fast as I could since running was against the rules. Wes's bus was parked to the left of mine in its usual spot, but I knew he wouldn't be there yet. His last class on Thursdays was math with the smart kids, which was on the opposite side of the school. As I took my usual seat, I decided to use the extra few minutes checking out the other kids on his bus, trying to see if I could pick out the mystery guy myself. I winced when I zoned in on a boy sitting in the front row. Oh, God, don't let it be Spencer Banks. He was nice enough, but I couldn't get past the whole pick your boogers, then eat them thing. Scanning the remaining rows, I was talking was about to give up when I saw Wes taking his usual seat on the fourth row, same as me. He turned to face the window with a wide grin plastered across his face. And despite my nerves, I smiled back because I loved his big toothy grin. And his eyes, and his laugh, and the way he made me feel like I was everything when the rest of the world treated me like I was nothing at all. I loved everything about Wesley Montgomery, inside and out. That's why it wasn't much of a shock when I suddenly realized every boy on Wes's bus could be madly in love with me and it wouldn't matter. I only cared about one. And then, as if the universe finally had my back for a change, my best friend raised his hand to his chest and pointed to himself.